Hey, what's up, in there, guys? Brian here, the three topics game hitter, share with you a really awesome, another one of my worst to best tier list style ranking videos. Now, yesterday I did happen to upload a reaction video to the latest Mortal Kombat 1 character trailer, in which it introduced the characters of General Shao, Sindel, it showed us some rating gameplay, and it showed us a little bit more of the story. And I was just thinking on what is a idea that I could follow this up with. And I was thinking, you know what? I've done a Mortal Kombat style ranking before for the games, but I have never actually done a ranking for the movies. And I figured that since we know that there's an upcoming live action film that's set to come out probably in, I would say, like another year or two, as well as another animated film coming out, I believe in October, I figured this would actually be a great time for me to do my own tier list style ranking on the current films and one side project and just Share my thoughts on each of them. So, heck, that's why we're here. So, if you do happen to enjoy this little tier list style ranking video for the Mortal Kombat films and project, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up, like, and remember if you guys have any ideas for future video ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to try to get them up as soon as I can. So, as we jump into this list that I've completely created on Tier Maker, as you can see, I have seven projects. The three live action films, the three current animated films, and I decided to add the Mortal Kombat Legacy television series, or technically it was a series, I'm not sure if it was, I do think it came out on TV or it was showed online, but I decided to add both seasons one and two and just combine them into just the overall Mortal Kombat Legacy series. Now as you can see from how I've have, well, I'm going to be ranking these, I have them separated into five different categories. I have them separated into, I loved it, I liked it, it's okay, has its moments, and then just absolutely avoid. So, we have Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the newest Mortal Kombat film, I believe it came out in 2021, as well as Mortal Kombat Scorp Legends Scorpion's Revenge, Mortal Kombat Legends Battle for the Realms, and then Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind. So, we're going to start off with what I thought is undoubtedly going to be the lowest on this list, and I think everyone will put this as the lowest, and it's... It's, it's almost not debatable. But obviously, the one that has to go the lowest is going to be Mortal Kombat Annihilation. But I am going to put it, not so much in a void, but I will put it in, it has its moment. Look, there's no question, Mortal Kombat Annihilation was a massive bomb. Big mistake. A lot of problems in this film, especially with how amazing the first film was. This was a classic case of them not expecting for the first film to be as successful as possible and then them just trying to crank everything up but the problem is, is that there was just so many mistakes made in terms of recasting trying to cram in too many different story elements from different games into one movie trying to add too many characters that didn't really have much to do into one film they just tried to add in so much spectacle that they forgot to try to tell a good story. Now, to its core, for those who actually haven't seen Mortal Kombat or Annihilation or have a void of it, this pretty much follows the, I would say, Mortal Kombat 2 and 3 storyline of Shao Kahn trying to kind of uh, combine the, or take over Earth Realm. And some craziness happens, and they throw in all these different Mortal Kombat elements. But overall, it, it, it just wasn't very good. Now, the reason I won't go so far as to say just totally avoid it is because there are very few things in here that I think are okay. I do think that three of the fights are actually good. I think that some of the characters that they introduce are actually done pretty well. Um... It has some good music at times. It's... I appreciate them trying to add in the element of animalities, even though it's not done very well. So I'll give it some points for trying. But again, it, it, it just overall is not a very good film. Now, if you're someone who didn't grow up with this, because you have to remember, I was seven years old when this came out, so I think I liked it maybe a little bit more back then than I do now, so as I've grown up, I kind of acknowledge that, yeah, it's not very good, but, heck, I was seven, so I, I'm sure I liked it then, but have grown up a bit, but I'll just say, yeah, it, it has some moments, and maybe once in a while, I'll pop it in and just have a, have a good chuckle at it, but yeah, overall, this is without question the worst Mortal Kombat Project that has come out to date. Now, as we go into the It's Okay tier, I'm actually going to put Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind. Um, 
I'm gonna put this in just okay. And the reason I will put it there is that I think this served better as like an Elseworld story than what I think does a very good job at connecting to the overall Mortal Kombat plot. Um, now this one focuses more on the character of Kenshi, but dealing with a younger Kenshi in terms of how he got blind. And it, 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 it doesn't like an Elseworld story in terms of like things that happen. Um, and I think when you do that, you kind of throw the risk of you needing to tell a good enough story that it stands on its own. And I just don't think it does that very well because at this minor swears, there's a point where you think one character is going to be the main bad and it ends up being another character. And I just didn't think that worked out very well. There's an element where they kind of throw in an elderly Sub-Zero and then they just kind of insert some Scorpion just for the heck of it. And I was just like, okay, that kind of felt kind of cheap. And so it's an animated film that I don't think told a strong enough story to tell on its own. I appreciate that you take the first battle of uh, the take you take the two animated prior uh, animated films, and they did a very good job of having it sort of connect very well to the traditional Mortal Kombat story, but telling the story in a slightly different way, but still staying very connected. And this felt, felt very much on its own. And I just don't think I enjoyed it as much as I'd say the prior two animated films. And that's my concern coming up with this upcoming Mortal Kombat film because that too is going to seem to do another thing. It's going to do something similar, but focusing on Johnny Cage. But that is something I'm concerned about. But I'm still curious to see what they plan to do with it. So overall, I think that there's definitely some great animation, some solid music. I think the fighting is great, but I just don't think the story is all that great because it has to be strong enough to stand on its own. And I just think that it's just okay. It's nothing great, which is why I would put it in the it's okay tier. Now, this is the part for me that is going to get really, really difficult because... I, I already, out of the five remaining ones, I already know where two of them are absolutely going, but the next three are kind of mixed up even now. I've spent like 30 minutes looking at them, and it keeps changing, so I'll try my best. The next spot I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, and I'm going to go with I liked it. Um... I liked how we have a film that kind of focuses on Scorpion, and that's good. Um, it goes over to, if anyone knows what Scorpion's story and, and how he became Scorpion, the film does a great job at doing that. My problem with this film is that they try to make Scorpion a far bigger player than he really is. Now, I will be the first one to admit, Scorpion is my favorite character in Mortal Kombat. But I never quite understand how he became the poster boy. I, I, I think it might have been his look. Maybe it was his story. But the, Mortal Kombat should have always stayed with Liu Kang. Liu Kang is the main character of Mortal Kombat. In the same sense that someone like Ryu is really the main character of Street Fighter. And yet for a good amount of Mortal Kombat's time, Liu Kang has always been kind of put in the background. And I think the issue I have with Scorpion's Revenge here is that they make him more significant because they try to tell the Mortal Kombat tournament story, but they have Scorpion do far more than I think he should. Like, a few spoilers. Like, they have him be the one who takes out Goru. They have him be the one who already takes out Quan Chi, like, immediately, even though there was, like, a, there was like a whole time period of Scorpion not knowing that, and it was a process before he got his revenge on Quan Chi, but in that, they... They condensed that really, really quickly, and I wasn't really a big fan of that. And they just have him do so much in this film. And I understand it's focused on Scorpion's Revenge, so it's like, well, obviously. But I just think that by doing that much, by having Scorpion be far more significant than he should have been, it really downplays everybody else. It really downplays Liu Kang. It downplays Katana. It downplays Raiden. It downplays Sony. It downplays Johnny Cage. It downplays Jax. Everyone gets downplayed for Scorpion. And I just openly acknowledge that in the grand scheme of Mortal Kombat storyline, Scorpion really isn't a big player. He, he's popular, I agree, no question. But he, sh he should never 
be given more credit than he should. And I just think that Scorpion's Revenge does that. Even though he is, the story should be focused on him. And I think if they should have done that, then they just should have had an alternate story focusing on what he's trying to do. And, and, and they do, and they try to do that, but it kind of hurts the Mortal Kombat story. And that's my issue with it. I still love it. still think it's great. Like, Scorpion's total badass, but I just don't like how they push him so hard that it hurts the rest of the cast. That's why I would put it in, I liked it. Next on my list, I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat Legacy. Now, the problem, now the thing with Mortal Kombat Legacy is that because I combined it, it's, a, it's in a weird spot because season one I thought was just okay. But season two is where I think things were really, really good. Almost borderline, I loved it because they did a lot of things story wise with characters. That I had that had never been done before, but I thought were very, very interesting. I really like what they did with Liu Kang in the sense that Liu Kang actually joins forces with Shang Tsung. I'm not going to tell you why that happens, but I think that the way that they did it was incredible. And I just wish that this series had had a third season to end because season two ends on a cliffhanger, and we'll never know what happens afterwards. Even though it was like it was building up to something I thought was going to be really, really cool. And so season two, I loved. But season one, I thought was just okay. <laughs> and so it kind of sits borderline and I liked it, which is why overall I would actually say that I would put Legacy ahead of Scorpion's Revenge. Now, as we go into the next one, um, with, I'm going to have to go with the, the newest Mortal Kombat film. But I'm going to put it in... I liked it, but I'm actually going to put it behind Scorpion's Revenge. The reason I... There was so much potential for this film. And I, I saw this in theaters during COVID. So I, I didn't wait. To, I, didn't, I didn't see this on HBO Max. I actually went out to a theater and saw this. And they do a lot of interesting ideas. But it, it's a weird factor in the sense that the best parts of this film... Are really Kano that Kano's the Kano's best character in the film by far, <laughs> but I loved the first like eight minutes that focused on Scorpion and how he was killed and how his family was killed. That was an incredible opening, and I liked the last third. But everything in the middle was mixed. They introduced a number of ideas that I didn't like. Number one, I didn't care much for the Cole Young character. Why is he here? Not need it. Take him out. Whatever they do with him in the, in the next film, please reduce his part. I do not want Cole Young beating Shang Tsung. I do not want him beating Shao Kahn. His, his, his role needs to be seriously reduced because no one cares about Cole Young. I understand that they kind of want to add in a character who kind of is like a duck out of water storyline, but I don't think that was needed. You, you already had a, a number of great characters that it could have been focused on. And so it, it kind of reduces like the importance of other characters. I did not like the whole Arcana element. Never liked that. I think it's stupid. Never liked it. Hated it. Another thing was I didn't like the portrayal of certain characters. I and, and and showing how weak they are. Some of the fight scenes were good, but again that was all in the last third. And 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 how certain how certain elements of the story just didn't play out very well. It was it was weird. Like they had such a strong opening, and they had a good closing. But everything in the middle was just kind of mixed. They just introduced so many ideas that just did not work for me at all. So I'm not sure what their plan is. It's it's weird. You have a Mortal Kombat film and it never focuses on the tournament itself. And then they throw in this element is, oh, the only reason that Shang Tsung has been able to win these tournaments, because apparently you have, to, you have to remember, you have to win like 10 tournaments in a row, is he's been killing the opposing team's fighters before the tournament ever happens. And I was just like, Ray, like Raiden, you, you, you're telling me you let this happen nine times? Like you, you would think to add kind of protection or some rules saying you can't kill the opposing team's fighters before the torment? It was just, just it was, it was a mess of things. I still enjoyed it for what it was, but it, it, it wasn't perfect. So I really hope that they learn from their mistakes, and they do a better job in the sequel, which they have the potential to do. I've just seen the cast and w what they want to do. I just hope it's in major improvement. But. Yeah, I, I would have to put it at just the borderline of I liked it because I this, the beginning was so strong and I do like that what they do do at the end. Now the last two parts are absolutely I loved it. So obviously I really really loved Battle of the Realms. 
This did a better job at telling the Mortal Kombat storyline than I think in Scorpio's Revenge with an actual strong focus on making sure Liu Kang was given a much stronger role than he should. And the end of the day, Liu Kang should be the main character. He should be. And I do think that Battle of the Realms does a really great job. And this focuses more on Mortal Kombat 2 storyline. And I think they did a fantastic job with it. I thought that the fights were great. I thought that the introduction of certain characters was very handled well. The fight scenes were incredible. I think that everyone had a moment to shine. There were definitely a number of antagonist characters that got killed off. There were a number of protagonist characters that got messed up. And I thought that how it played out as a whole was great. There were definitely some characters in here that got killed off that I was very, very surprised about. And they went in certain directions that I wasn't expecting. But overall, I thought it worked. It wasn't exactly this, the way that the story plays out, but I think that it did a much better job of being respectful to the traditional Mortal Kombat storyline than I think something like Scorpion's Revenge did. Which is why, if you haven't seen this film, I would definitely recommend it. Out of any of the animated films, this one is by far the best. But obviously that has to leave just only one spot left and only one film left, and that has to go to the 1995 Mortal Kombat live action film. To this day, it is still the best Mortal Kombat film. It is still the best Mortal Kombat project outside of the games. This film was incredible, even at its time. And tech to this day, a lot of people still consider this to be one of the best video game-based movies of all time. In fact, I would even go so far as say this was the first good one. Some people might not think it's great, but like in terms of comparing that all the video game-based movies that had come out at that time, this was by far the best and the most successful. A lot of people did not think this would be as successful as it was, but it did. This thing has an incredible soundtrack. The fights to this day are some of the best like hand-to-hand -hand combat fight scenes I've ever encountered. I thought the cast was great. I thought the story did a very good job of actually telling the Mortal Kombat storyline properly. I love the set locations. I like the visuals, even though some of the CGI is very, very, very outdated. I absolutely love the portrayal of the characters. Everyone did a phenomenal job of giving a good portrayal of their character properly. And at the end... It had everything. It had everything you, you, you want you want on a fighting film. In fact, I even recall there was like some reviewer who complained that this movie had too much fighting. And I thought that was stupid because it was clearly someone who didn't understand Mortal Kombat at all. But overall, this is the best Mortal Kombat content outside of the games, even by today's standards. I absolutely love I loved it as a kid. I loved it as a teenager. I still love it as an adult. And I make sure to watch this at least twice a year, which is why without question, 1995's Mortal Kombat film is to this day the best Mortal Kombat content outside of the games and which is why it is the top part of my list. So that is my tier list ranking of all of the Mortal Kombat projects that have come out to this day outside of the games. I decided not to include the like live action film, that live action TV series that came out in the 90s and I didn't include the cartoon because I didn't see those but I just focused on the content that I had seen. So just based off of these seven projects, if you've seen them or know about them, how would you rank them? Share your ranking with me and everyone else in the comments down below. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I'll see you next time.